Hello, wonderful people. Welcome back to my channel, The Teacher's Best Friend. And today is Sunday. It's Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all the best dads out there that are watching. So um, due to requests from several viewers on uh, U.S. Embassy interview, I decided to produce this video to give some tips for those that are scheduled for the U.S. Embassy interview very soon. So I want you to listen carefully and take down notes and I'll give you some tips on how to pass your U.S. Embassy interview. Are you ready? So let's begin. So I have seven tips for today that I'm going to give to you. And the first one, of course, is you need to have a checklist of what kind or what types of documents you need to bring for your embassy interview. So make sure you have your documents with you. So the first one, of course, is your appointment letter because that will be checked at the gate of the U.S. Embassy. In order for you to get in, you have to have that appointment letter. And then you need to bring your passport, you need to bring your job offer. So if you have a contract available, you can bring that as well. That will signify that you have an employer and they're willing to hire you in the United States. Don't forget to bring your DS-2019 and of course, uh, they will also ask about insurance. Are you covered by the insurance in the United States? If that is not available, you can just tell them that the employer or the school offers an insurance for the teachers. So just, just mention that. And of course, bring your credentials because they might take a look just to verify if you are really a teacher so like your transcripts, the original transcripts, and even your um, employment certificate in, the, in your country. So those are not really needed, the credentials, but you just need to bring them just in case they will ask for it. And uh, those are the, the documents that you will be needing. Second tip, how are you going to answer questions? Like for example, why do you want to teach in the United States? So why do you want to teach in the United States? Remember, you are a teacher in your home country. And why do you still want to teach in the United States? And since you are going on a J-1 visa, that is a cultural exchange teacher program, you can focus on you, what you would like to uh, immerse in the education system in the United States and learn about their uh, new professional developments and approach in the classroom. And uh, it's a good experience for you to develop your uh, career or your craft more. And when you go back to your home country, you can share it in the public school where you're working or in any schools that you are working because that is the purpose of the J-1 visa teacher. It's to be uh, like an exchange teacher. So focus on your purpose, which is to immerse in the education setting and in the culture of uh, the state or place you are going to work with, okay? And of course, you can also mention about uh, professional growth because uh, they know that United States offer a lot for professional growth. You can also mention that on the question on why do you want to teach in the United States, okay? Second question that is commonly asked, what is the school name and the location, like the state? You need to memorize that, your school name properly. And uh, where is it, uh, what city it is located and the state. You need to know that uh, by heart. And it is better if you can say something about the school district, like, you know, uh, it is a K-12 school. It has this number of population. And um, this is uh, most of their population uh, com consists of diverse, like, you know, like there are, um, let's say, Native American or Mexican and other uh, races. So it's good for you to know the school that you are going to. So make a little research about that. 
and you show that you are excited to go to that place, okay? Even though, uh, let's say it is a city or it is a remote area, it doesn't matter because your purpose is to experience their educational setting and of course the work. And uh, third tip or third question that they uh, ask usually in an interview, so what was your plan after your J-1 uh, visa program or after completing your J-1 program? So what was your plan? So now you have to think of what is your plan? So you can say like after completing your J-1 program, you will go back to your home country and share your experience, whatever you learned from this J-1 program from a professional development, instructional strategy, technological approach, and even sharing the culture. So you say you can start documenting all of those experiences. So when you go back, you have something to share to other teachers and to like the public school and to the Philippine government. So that is the best answer for that, that you are excited to go back and share your experience. And if they asked you the next question, do you plan to bring your family? So for the single people, uh, you know, sometimes there are single parents. So sometimes they also ask that. So if, they, if you are uh, declaring there that you're married and you have children, you always say yes. You would like to bring your family with you, but... Uh, you have to go first, establish yourself maybe for a couple of months in the United States and prepare your home and whatever uh, needed for your family. And then if they have a chance, uh, you wanted to bring them because it's a good experience also for your family to be immersed in the culture and of, of course experience uh, studying in the US even just for a short time. Because uh, Americans are supporting family. So they would like to hear that you are bringing your family with you. Okay, so the answer is yes. Are you bringing your family with you? Yes, but I need to settle first so that when they come, uh, they will be comfortable when they arrive in the US. So that is the best answer. Another question that might, uh, you know, they might throw it on you during your interview. Do you have a family in the US? So if there is really like brother, sister, parents, you say yes, you cannot deny that because you know the system of the United States, once they uh, punch in your birthday, everything, all your information are, are out there. They know that you have a parent, they know that you have a brother or sister, so you do not deny that. So if they ask, do you have a family in the United States? Yes, I have a family in the United States and they're living there since, let's say 2002, you can share that. And of course they have a follow-up question. Are you planning to join your family in the US? And you can say, uh, I would like to, but I am in a J-1 visa program. My purpose is to work there and work in the district that I am joining. But uh, it would be good that during holiday, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, I will surely visit my family. So you need to be honest and sincere. You cannot say, no, I'm not going to visit my family. They will not believe that. You say, yes, I have a family. And if given a chance during uh, holidays like Christmas and Thanksgiving, I would like to visit with my family. And then um, if they say, do you, when do you plan to live for the US? So if, if your employer told you already the calendar on the start day of the class, you can say that like, for example, uh, the class uh, in, in the district that I am employed uh, starts on August 12th. If possible, I can leave, let's say, August 8th or August 10th, so I have uh, some time to prepare myself, and I can join them on their first day to have some orientation. 
So you, you need to know those details and you need to be casual in answering. And if they say, do you have a plan to change your visa? And you can say, well, J-1 visa is only for three years. And if I am lucky enough, I will be given an extension of two years. So I just wanted to complete my program. That is my purpose. And whatever the future uh, may, may, may lead me, then um, that will remain to be seen. So you don't close it. You don't say like, no, I don't have a plan because sometimes that is, <laughs> especially when they see your face and it doesn't look sincere. Don't even say that, just say, your visa is just for three years and you may have a two years extension, but whatever uh, plan of uh, changing visa in the future, you are not thinking about that and uh, you are just focusing on whatever is given to you at this time. And the future will dictate if there is an opportunity, but for now, no, you're not changing your visa. So that is the best answer, okay? And then, of course, uh, you show that you are excited. And if uh, they ask you, is this your first time going to the United States? Yes, this is my first time. Or you can say, no, this is, uh, I already visited the US. You need to, to be casual in answering those. And if it is your first time, you can even mention that uh, you are excited to see different places aside from the state that you are visiting. So just, ve just be very casual, okay? And be honest, you cannot hide anything. You just need to be sincere in the question and focus on your goal, which is to teach under a J-1 visa. And it's just a temporary, it's a temporary visa, which is three to five years, so, okay? So those are the tips that I can give you. And of course, always wear your smile dress appropriately and uh, be, pa be patient and be focused on the interviewer. And of course, say a little prayer. That makes a lot of difference. So good luck to those who have an interview. And those are just my tips for you on the US Embassy interview and focusing on the J-1. And it's true with other visa as well. Just be sincere, just be honest and state your purpose, okay? So bye for now. Thank you for watching and to God be the glory. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have a topic that you would like me to discuss, feel free to message me or comment on the line down below. So see you next time. Bye.